welcome to another Café Rollist. Uh, today, yet another opportunity to interact with someone I interacted a bit online, a bit, a fair bit. Uh, and finally, I can have a, a proper conversation uh, with Rodin Kearns. Could you introduce yourself to our viewers? Hello, I'm Roland Kunz. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm a ink-based artist, uh, like illustrator, and uh, I like to call myself a weirdo game designer as well. Um, what, what else do you want from an intro? I don't know, you were telling me you... Where are you streaming from? Uh, you told me you woke up very early this morning. Ah, uh, yes. Yeah, I'm in uh, Austin, so it is currently 8.17 a.m. on a Sunday, a little bit earlier than I'll get up on a Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> there are some days during the week where I'm up this early, but I do not like it on a weekend. No, I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm, fine. You, uh, I'm just I'm having some coffee in here. You're lucky at the moment. I got a two years old who uh, has a brand new bed without any kind of uh, barriers. So no, he, he wakes up at 6 a.m. and jumps in our bed uh, as soon as he is. And he's really unwilling uh -huh. to go back to sleep. So yeah, uh, we, we are a bit shorter on sleep over here as well. Um, we've got oh, a couple... man, that, see, there's your first mistake. The, the lack of barriers. You got you to gotta strap him in there. Yeah, but that's the thing. <laughs> we need some kind of strapping because before we remove the barriers, he managed, he learned to throw himself above the barrier. So we didn't want him to break an arm uh, in the morning or during the night. So we were better off removing them. So so now he's got a, a proper little boy bed. So 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 there you go. But uh, yeah, it's more encouraged. So it, that's sort of what things are like on a day-to-day -day basis for me at the moment. But Actually, one of our ice-breaking questions on the show, because this spin-off show was born out of uh, COVID-19. Uh, what's your routine like at the moment? Uh, was it changed in any way uh, by the, the lockdown? Or I, I'm, not, I'm not sure where you are if there's a lockdown at the moment. Uh, well, there was a while that I was um, work from home. And um, actually that, uh, you know, definitely changed my routine a bit instead of uh, uh going to the day job uh five days a week i would just be rolling out of bed and uh of course there's no you know there's no way to play test stuff like in person you gotta start doing uh everything online so um uh i you know like many people i ended up with a lot more free time <laughs> once the uh uh quarantine and uh pandemic stuff started so, but, uh, and also it, it was, uh, me mostly marking the passage of time with the, uh, progress on projects. So it was kind of what finally pushed the dungeon generator out into the world and Fragnarok too, actually. Oh, wow. That, so th that's actually a bit like me. I'm not at your stage of, I, so, so you have a, a campaign running right now. Uh, uh, my own game, Paris Gondo, the life-saving magic of inventoring, sort of had a, a kick in the butt also because of the the pandemic. I started running much more playtests online, starting to invite people to to try it uh, and so on. So, so I wonder, yeah, maybe will be maybe people will be more creative because of that, or maybe not. I, I'm not sure how it will turn out. Yeah, I think hardship always makes people more creative, right? Uh, in in one way or another, um, but like I guess if there's no real outlet, um, uh, like I'm still fine. My my day job is still there. It's just like weird. So, uh, so if if there's not a particular like necessity to pour that creativity into, uh, yeah, uh, you know, if you're like. I'm lucky enough not to be experiencing real hardship right now. Um, then it uh, kind of turns into creative projects, right? Like personal projects and stuff like that. Or at least there's, once the anxiety dies down, right? <laughs> yeah. There's more of a, more of a um, availability for that. So, so your full time. <sighs> Sorry, uh, I'm just waiting. Up. Sorry. 
So are you full time working? Uh, no, just waking uh, up, just shaking the cup. <laughs> it's fine. So are you working full time uh, f for your art, or you you got you got a side job, uh, or is that working? Oh no, I mean, I basically I I have two full time jobs. So I I uh, I've got a day job, and then I uh, uh, work on art when I come home, and work art design, all that stuff. So and then uh, you know my day job is such that I am able to do some of that at the day job too. So it's a, it's a, an all right setup for me so far, you know, <laughs> at this, at this time, we're, we'll see how, what the, uh, what 2021 holds. So you <laughs> getting, uh, getting off the brand new, uh, bingo card. So, so your, your, your password zombie, uh, epidemic next year. So we'll be talking in about your current Kickstarter in a in a couple of minutes, but uh, your past projects included. Uh, is it called Goblin Quest for Grant Oh, oh, yeah, no, I didn't do Goblin Quest. I did a uh, I did a big old like lovely piece of um, art, like a big poster that they can sell at conventions. Basically, Goblin Quest is a inspiration for me uh, grant how it does some really great work um he's done you know uh larger projects like spire he's uh gotten some internet fame uh i, I think uh, critical role did uh an episode of honey heist if i remember correctly yeah and crush so, pandas as well yeah yeah so um so that that that's kind of one of my inspirations but yeah goblin quest was one of the first that was I, I found goblin quest when i was first getting into uh short form tabletop rpgs uh and uh i i also have just always loved all the different permutations of goblins uh <laughs> so, so that you know the having the uh really interesting mechanics where uh people not familiar you have like a clutch of goblins uh so you design with like a little uh you kind of get to draw the uh features of each of these five goblins and uh they share some characteristics and then um the rest are unique and you start with one and uh play out different rpg scenes and they're kind of expendable, like in the old, uh, what is it, Paranoia uh, tabletop RPG? Like, it, that one had packs of clones. But basically, when, when your goblin loses enough uh, limbs and hit points to die, it's replaced by the next one in line in your clutch. So you, you've got this rotating cast of silly characters. Um, and also, just like, I love the idea of a character changing drastically just like in a single session you know what i mean like uh and there's a lot of interesting moments that can come from that so um those two like that was definitely a big inspiration for uh for fragnarok the um i guess i describe it as a laser viking rpg it's another short form rpg that was that was the project i put out earlier this year um got some really great uh guest artists um uh bodie h uh b-o-d-i-e-h on instagram uh does these great like cartoon they they kind they're kind of reminiscent of like adventure time i guess uh but they're all fantasy illustrations and he's really uh blowing up he's done some uh, work for Hello from the Magic Tavern, a bunch of RPG podcasts, like just kind of, he's just kind of got work everywhere now. Like, uh, he, uh, there was a, an indie video game that he did a bunch of icons and uh, like 2D work for that just came out this year. So he's got some art in Fragnarok. Uh, there's uh, this great um, map maker named uh, Skull Fungus. Who I got to make a, a map for the back. So good. He's he's a great like inky artist and he does all these usually isometric uh uh maps for tabletop RPGs and they're 
I, I think they're all system agnostic too. It's just, you, you can grab a map and uh, have a really neat little uh, environment to go through. Um, and then who are the others? Uh, we've got um, uh, Dark Wizard Berserker who does a, a mix of like classic JRPG and Dungeons and Dragons and like heavy metal uh and, and just has a really cool inky art style um and dire quest it rounds it out he's got a style that's pretty close to mine it's sort of like mike mignola style like heavy on the shadows heavy on the uh deletion of forms and stuff and uh he actually runs this great uh choose your own adventure kind of uh game on instagram so uh, we should put all of them in the in the notes. Like they're yeah, all really great. I definitely will. I, I really like the work of Buddy, who happens to be in the chat room with us right now. Apparently, we got some issues with the the stream, but uh, hopefully, it should be better on YouTube. Usually, it is. Uh, my broadband it, it can be bad sometimes, but uh, yeah, it turns out I purchased two arts so far from Buddy for my game, Paris Gondo: The Life Saving Magic of Inventoring. Because when I found out about him through your own Instagram, uh, I, I'm not even sure how Instagram works anymore, but you liked something. Well, through you, I, I found this page. And it, it's it's a perfect match with the the concept I had of people in a dungeon finding all those weird objects. He's got a lot of pictures of single objects which are absolutely hilarious. And uh, yeah, he was kind enough to sell me two of his art. And I'm still crossing finger to to purchase more heart for for the quick start and maybe the the full game uh, later. Uh, yeah, I I didn't point out yet. Uh, we're gonna do some advertisement here today uh, for the, the two of us. Uh, it turns out you're you're the person I commissioned to do our, our logo, uh, which people can can see here and should see uh, bigger in a in a second. Uh, was I your worst client ever? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. I've had much worse clients. <laughs> I'm in a weird spot as someone who commissions art because I know art enough to have a precise idea of what I want, but I'm I'm not an artist enough to deliver this art. So it yeah, it makes it absolutely terrible for the people I, I hire. I assume because uh. I was uh, the logo especially was was very difficult the the the, more, the rest of the art i think i, I really love what you did uh, with just my prompts but uh even if some were weird like uh, ask you for a boris johnson kaiju of some kind i did not know who that was <laughs> I'm like looking up like oh okay cool it's a jerk um oh, he's a big jerk hey. yeah <laughs> Yeah, um, yeah, no, I, uh, and that's every logo design, really. I try to shy away from that now, or I mean, you know, uh, it, 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 because it's something, it's something really important and really personal, and it's like, you know, whoever's commissioning a logo is um, a hundred percent invested in the thing that they need the logo for. So this has to be like, you know, exact, you know, exact perfect to specs right and uh and that of course can be frustrating to go back and forth is frustrating it's you know, really but, tough also because but, it sits in between graphic design and art it's yeah. it, it's not quite just one of the the two so it, it's visual communication and art so yeah that stuff but uh yeah i'm very happy with the the logo in the end which i guess is what, it's what matters how do I get in that Twitch chat room? I guess, I don't know. Say hi for everybody. Well, you would hi, have... everybody. Yeah, hello, everybody. Uh, Buddy is giving us a, a, a thumbs up. We've got Camula as well and Lurks. Thanks, everyone, for, for joining. If anyone's got comment or question, I, I will I will read them out to you. Right now, it's only Buddy giving a, a thumbs up and, uh, and me uh, justifying why our, our, our video is struggling. Uh, but uh, on that, let's... Uh, uh let's discuss of your project here that's what you're you're here for uh, uh what's the dungeon dungeon generator that's a, not we both of you we we develop games with difficult names to 
to project. I, I put some visuals so people ca can see uh, what what it's like. So, how did you? What is it first? And how did you get the idea for it? So it's the Dun Generator. It is a deck of cards that randomly generates uh, a, or randomly generates dungeons. Um, the kind of big unique part to it, besides the fact that it's covered in you know uh, original ink art, is um, the there's a simple little algorithm to how uh, how it does that. Um, the basically the, all of the Cards are double sided, and if while you're laying out the cards, if uh, you overlap one, you instead uh, flip over the previous one to like a dead end. So uh, just that simple mechanic, what that does is kind of make these really nice, twisty, organic uh, looking dungeons. And uh, yeah, I don't know, there's been a really, really great response for it so far. So I'm hoping to. Um, well, it, it's already been enough that I have the funds to uh, draw a second series. So uh, hopefully I can kind of keep that going and make a bunch of different themed decks for it. Um, I'm going to uh, have votes on all of the uh, stretch goals and stuff, all the rewards that got unlocked um, on my Discord. and. Probably on social media, but if you go on the Discord, you'll get to vote more than once because that's how that's how this democracy works, I guess. Uh, so uh, I'm gonna vote on themes. People can suggest themes. Uh, people have uh, mentioned like a sci-fi deck that would be really fun to draw, like uh, Space Hulk's kind of thing, uh, a city, um, like desert maybe some ruins, just more dungeon is a very viable <laughs> option. Um, yeah, but the, the idea is to have like, you know, multiple environments that you can move through and make sure that each of those cards has like some sort of uh, point of interest, like visual uh, prompt so that uh, if you're a dungeon master or game master, whatever, whatever, you're, whatever you're doing, uh, you can just like basically flip a card uh, and uh, take a quick peek at it and figure out for your players, like, okay, we're in this sort of environment. Um, and then if you need to blow it up into a full battle map, you can. Like, they're gridded, uh, and there will be uh, PDFs and PNG versions for virtual tabletops. So you can just, like, pull that room up for your players and uh, place them in it, and suddenly you can have, like, a, a full-on... Uh, like fourth edition style <laughs> minis war if you want to. Um, or you can pull yeah. them on Roll Twenty or or your yeah. whatever online thing uh, you you're using. Are, are the are, do the rooms come with uh, some type of encounters or in additional information regarding them, or it's it's mainly about the the layout or, or of them? Yeah, I'm just trying to do that visually. Um, uh, because you know where would the text go, right? If they're yeah. already double -sided. Um, I could I could do like a little um title for them. They they each did uh spring out of a choose your own adventure style thing that was running on Instagram for a while, like about a year ago. Honestly, it's taken me a while to put these out. Um, so uh, people would jump in there uh to just like the the basic drawing and I would run sort of a rules light uh, like improv version of D and D for them. Um, so each the point is each of those rooms already has some sort of theme and some like kind of backstory to it, right? Like some stuff that's going on in there. Uh, so I could pull that out and I, I find if you just come up with an interesting title, for a work like that or, or an environment or whatever that is enough usually to kind of give people that are stuck a bit of a springboard so maybe i'll do that uh at least with the digital version or something like name each if it doesn't get in the way of uh linking them up to the physical deck yeah. right i want I want people to be able to immediately um be able to jump from the the physical deck to uh these battle maps you know 
Yeah, but it's, I, don't know. Yeah, I think you're right. It's uh, it's about them being a visual prompt. So if you see a little skeleton in a corner, a well, or a broken bridge, it's up to the dungeon masters or other players to come up what's actually going on uh, more in detail uh, in the map. You mentioned uh, having to go online. Have you tried using your system uh, online? Lately, I've been experimenting, experimenting with Miro quite a bit. And I even run into a... Uh, I don't know what's the right term, a coder, she, her name is Laflis, and she, she designs plugins for Miro aimed for tabletop role-playing games, and she's creating a platform for, for people to even do their own with, with her tools. Uh, have, you, have you tried anything like that on Roll20 or another platform, uh, trying to come up with your deck uh, already online? Uh, I haven't gotten the... Uh... The, the deck's not in uh, Roll20 or Astral or anything like that yet. I have been uh, working on figuring out what's best for that, though. Yeah, definitely I've been playing a lot of Roll20 uh, over the uh, quarantine, though. So uh, learning some ins and outs there. going to try to make it real cool. <laughs> <laughs> you you were mentioning that uh, you're looking for new goals because your uh, the success so far has been uh, very very nice so maybe that's uh, a a goal you could add to the the campaign uh, uh, a dedicated plugin on Miro so you have the cards and you click them they pop out and you can flip them directly uh, I can hook you up with Laughless if you want uh, to see if it's uh, technically challenging or not. I have no clue, I'm not a coder, so I, I don't know. I just used just used it to run Sonya and Conan versus the ninjas. And uh yeah, it was very impressive with a, a a play mat and the special cards you just click on a button and on a button and they, they show up. So it, it was quite oh, that's, I'd love you to it, you should send me that link if you if you'd be so kind after yeah, the sure. show. I would love to check that out and uh, get some ideas from that. I've been thinking about it. It's not a. Is it a Roll Twenty plugin? It's a separate. It's a separate. App? It's a separate thing. Personally, I like it better than Roll Twenty, but it's not made for for rope. So the platform's called Miro. That's what I use for Paris Gondo. It's a collaborative tool. So technically, it's made for people to work together, and you got pin boards you can share. I even know people who've oh. been. They've been running a campaign of uh, uh, Delta Green, and they made the you know the pin board like in good old investigation movies where you got the pictures of all the yeah. suspects with the wires be between them. They they did that with Miro, but uh, I found that to run some types of games, especially with visual ads, uh, they load up much faster than uh, Roll Twenty, and more importantly. It's much easier. It works much better to zoom in and zoom out using the what do you call that? The uh, uh, your your mouse uh, and the the little wheel on the mouse uh, to to go through them. I, I personally find it it works uh, better than uh, than Roll Twenty. But you don't have you don't have a character keeper, so for that you would have to to use. Uh, what is it called? Uh, D&D Beyond or something else. Or you could open Roll20 on the side, I guess, to, to use just a character keeper yeah. or something like that. Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah, I, right now I have a, a real like Frankenstein solution for um, my tabletop stuff online. I, I, I use um, either Roll20 or Discord or Astral. Uh, which is a, just another Roll20, basically. Uh, Off-brand Roll20. <laughs> um, uh, and then along with that, I've got a great little uh, a character maker. So I've got like this PDF up. And then also, uh, if it's Roll20 or uh, Astral, there are like in, um, what do you call it? In-app uh, character sheets. Aurora is the name of the 5th edition character builder. It's quite good i really like it um there's some very good tools like that uh, there's a lot of people talking about oh what would be the ultimate platform i like the idea of having yeah. different platforms specializing in doing one thing uh lately i've been using a lot of i'm playing with the gauntlet and they they use dice roller they got different apps different browser-based things uh you can even roll 
D10s in specific ways like you would in uh, Legend of the Five Rings or Fate Dice and, and stuff like that. There's a lot of people out there coding a lot of different tools for their games at the moment. It's it's kind of exciting. Yeah. It's a bit of a mess, but it's exciting. Yeah, yeah, it is really cool. I, man, I uh, we were using a group. Uh, it's like a shared like dice pool. It's just it's like built just for that. I, I can't remember what it's called. I'll have to look it up. But for one of my groups, we use like uh, it, it's still digital dice, but everybody gets to see the result of the roll immediately. Yeah, and it, it has like cart stuff like that built in too. You know which one I'm talking about? Maybe not which one, which one because I used like three or four of them well, each yeah, time with different yeah, yeah. game masters, I, and I never quite bothered remembering a specific one. Because they they were all okay, but none of them so far really caught my eye. Like, oh, this is this is the thing. I'm I'm not game mastering a lot at the moment, also, so I, I don't really care for it. I just show up as a player and I use whatever uh, I'm uh, presented. Yeah, whatever's so, comfortable for them, right? Like that's the just uh, support your DMs, everyone. Man, well, we should uh, we should uh, get together to try out your game. I I don't know if you if you plug it every time or whatever and you're sick of it, but I, I, I you want to talk about that a little bit? I mean, I, I don't want to encroach uh, too much on, on the promotion of the generator, uh, but uh, yeah, I definitely love to play uh, my game with you and, and Body who's here uh, and anyone really. I ran it yesterday. Uh, two of my players, uh, one it was their second time, another was their third time and the last player, it was their first time playing. Uh, and uh, yeah, they enjoyed it. And uh, the concept is you start the adventure. It's it's sort of a, yeah, it's a GM-less game. You're all players. One can facilitate by reading a, a script I made, but you, you don't even really need that. But the, the concept is that you arrive at the end of a dungeon, you defeated whatever creature was on top of this dungeon, and the game, you start very quickly, you agree together what the dungeon is, and I've got prompts for that. So yesterday we were in a uh, abandoned team park, which was under the sea and ruled by... What was the ruler of that one? I don't remember. <laughs> I don't even remember. What, what, oh, it was a giant squid. Yesterday it was a, a giant... Uh, f it was a squid family who was grown out of proportion and uh, so so that was the dungeon uh, the ruler was the giant squid then we come up with the party each player need to pick a uh, one of six classes so you got the wizard the bard the rogue the fighter the cleric and the barbarian and the difference between them is that they got starting inventories which are different they got different objects they start with uh, they got a deck of cards which each object, uh, a card for each object, and then uh, they can carry more or less. So the wizard can carry less and the barbarian can carry more. And then you find the loot, uh, that, which is sort of the core of the game. You find the loot, you roll the stats for the loot, and with the stats you rolled, you need to come up with what the object is. So that's where you're creative. It, that's where you say, okay, I rolled a, a six in it. So you got three stats, four. Uh, you got the encumbrance, or, or heavy it is. So if it's a one, that's like a ring. If it's a six, it's like a piano. Uh, then <laughs> you've got the usefulness, like uh, it's a one, well, it's a magic ring. Uh, it's a six in, uh, no, it's a six in usefulness. It's a magic ring or a magic piano. If it's a, a one uh, in usefulness, <laughs> It's a broken piano, or it's just a souvenir ring, which you cannot do anything with it. And so that's the usefulness. Um, then you got the emotion. So the emotion is this piano belonged to this great master bard of that universe, and he was so famous. He uh, he wrote a goodbye little uh, red uh, little yellow big gnome uh, you come up with all this story each player come up with the story of their two objects and then you trade the objects and depending on the objects you have you make rolls and you can die because you were not useful enough as a group so you, you got stuck in the dungeon 
you can die because you were hoarding too much, you were carrying too much stuff, so you die because of that. And once you're out of the dungeon, if you had em enough emotion in your in your objects, you will have a stimulating and invigorating life for the the rest of your days. You will feel fulfilled because the actually the the big joke which I should have started with is that it's it's a big it's a, a tongue-in-cheek tribute to encumbrance rule but also Marie Kondo so the yeah, concept yeah. is you get rid of stuff uh, if they don't spark joy in you so so it's all about do people feel fulfilled uh, at the at the end of the day and yeah it's quite cool people come up with crazy stories and the uh, there are twists happening in the story when they, they pass away and they ask them, okay, you you died because of one of the objects you were carrying. What happened to you? Uh, and, oh, well, I was I had this uh, fae in a jar and I started having this big argument with her and then I tried to throw the fae over the cliff and I fell with her and we ended up stuck in that uh, pit for centuries arguing all the time. So it's, it's stuff like that, huh? So good. Uh, yeah, I definitely, I got to get in. Are, are you playing on um, uh, Tabletop Simulator or how are you playtesting it? With Mural? Mural, yes. Or... Mural again. Uh, okay. So, yeah, I, yeah. Can, I can set up a game for, a for sure. Sorry? Yeah, I would love to. Great. That, uh, it's a great idea. I, I, I'd love to check that out and uh, but you do need some playtesting with you. You need to run me a game with uh, using Dungeon Generator as well. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I, I, um, I, I'll I'll have to get it in Mural and also all those other places, right? But I I I'm imagining for most of them it's like, you know, drag and drop and arrange your PNGs in a particular uh, folder structure or something, and you're good to go. Uh, but yeah, kind of kind of working on figuring all that stuff out, one step at a time. You know, there's a lot to do. So one step at a time. Coming back to the generator, you were saying that you, I mean, if you have you reached all the goals of the campaign. First of all, when is the campaign ending? And if people are well, so first of all, people should go check the the campaign and uh, pledge to it. But if they miss the deadline, will it be possible to to still purchase the game, uh, uh, the not the game, the the gaming head uh, afterwards? And what were the the goals that you you managed to unlock. Let me. Uh, so yes, it, all the goals are unlocked at this point because I I didn't want to. At a certain point, I didn't want to add any more because I just I didn't want to like overwhelm the the core project, right? Um, yeah, at the end. So everything. What, what matters is you deliver. <laughs> Sometimes uh, people yeah. plan so many goals that in the end they. Uh, Instead of coming out the next month, the thing comes up uh, five years later. So you don't want to do that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So the yeah the the big thing will be getting the uh, getting the physical stuff out there, and then the digital stuff will kind of roll out. Like the extra digital stuff, the battle maps, um, and the digital version. I'm planning on getting out uh, it, by the you know due date of. Christmas, if not before, so that people who, you know, uh, want to give it as a gift or whatever, have something to unwrap on Christmas, even if it's like digital, like, uh, uh -huh. you know, so that, that stuff will kind of be like the, the, uh, the first push. Um, but yeah, we, we unlocked all the stretch goals in the stretch goal dungeon. Uh, the first one was to pay my brother who, uh, Put together a really nice video for me. I, I uh, love that video. I, I will need to hire your brother for my game. It works very yes, well. Yes, dude. He's setting up uh, um, uh, a simple way to take on freelance video work, and he's he'll be looking for uh, you know some some extra side hustle uh, video work. Uh, so yeah, his his handle is Boss Sauce uh, B A W S S. S A W S S. <laughs> I'm, I'm heading. So, uh, spelled the most ridiculous way. That's uh, that's where to find him. Um, so he got paid. That was their our first stretch goal. Um, we got nicer cardstock and a nicer box. Uh, just like 
happy to make the uh, physical deck the, the prettiest it can be. Um, we unlocked the both the black and white and color versions of the battle maps. So uh, they'll be both like, like nice printable versions, nice digital versions. Um, it, however, you know, some I personally just have like, uh, like not industrial, but like office grade uh, black and white like laser printer. So I always appreciate when somebody just has a black and white version of anything like that. Um, and what else? The the big one was the series two. So I, I made enough from this one to be able to draw another series um, and we'll vote on what exactly that will be um, via the Discord and social media and stuff like that. I'll post that as it goes. Looking at the uh, Kickstarter right now, what's the banana suit? Yeah, what is that banana suit? So <laughs> I'm getting there. There's, <laughs> we've got the backers Discord. We've got three digital token packs. Those will be voted on as far as theme goes as well. We've got the Goblin Infinite Goblin Generator, which is actually uh, it's a web app that I'm I'm working on with a, a programmer, um, which even just with the art um, generates over a trillion goblin permutations. So we calculated it out. And even if you spend like, I think it's like if you spend one second deciding whether the goblin that it generates will be sacrificed forever or uh, immortalized into your camera roll, um, you will never find the same goblin again. It's just <laughs> impossible. So. You're actually like, you've got this goblin's life in your hands. <laughs> and there's also, uh, that's just with the art. And there's also um, a name and kind of system agnostic, silly stat generator for them too. So uh, yeah, I, I'm, I'm hoping people can just like pop open the app and uh, roll up some goblins for their, for whatever game, whatever game they've got going and uh, get them in there. Or like we'll have different export methods for it, like uh, avatars for Twitter and uh, you know the full character sheet and blah blah blah. Whatever. Anyway, the banana suit. So the banana suit. I own a banana suit, and um, I just decided that the final like shoot the moon stretch goal, which I didn't really expect us to ever get to, uh, would be me doing something silly in the banana suit that people get to vote on. Nothing, nothing, uh, nothing in poor taste. Um, man, the banana suit's right there. I could try to, nah, I'll save it. I'll... Yeah, save it, save it. If people <laughs> so want a banana see... suit, they need to go to Kickstarter. <laughs> yeah, yeah, if you want, if you want this banana suit, if you want to see this guy in a banana suit, you're going to have to, uh, jump on there. <laughs> and to pay for it you know it's uh, uh it's a hustle that's yeah, you gotta, that's, you that's, you the, <laughs> that's the life we live in yeah, it's... <laughs> <laughs> well yeah so uh oh man so funny okay yeah so i'll be in a banana suit anyway that's that's the i don't want to toot my own horn too much but i am really excited how well it's done and just really grateful and it's honestly pretty surreal. Like I uh, haven't really wrapped my head around it. It's not going to be real until I have like the manufacturing money in an account and it's like being sent over to a manufacturer and like, yeah, my art gets to go out into the world and like go to, I don't know, 1200 people. That's mind boggling. Like, I, uh, I don't know. Anyway. Do you have fun manufacturers? You for, I mean, I don't know what's the sort of ratio of supporters you got on, on your Kickstarter, but uh, after discussing with quite a few people who run campaigns, uh, do you have enough uh, people supporting you, contributing via uh, from Europe, so that you're gonna manufacture some of your decks uh, in Europe for for people there, rather than uh, to you know to lower the shipping cost for to everyone? Yeah, definitely. I'm using a company called Noir Arts in Europe. Uh, I'm actually going to split the um, the manufacturing. It, at least that's at this point. So, yeah, it's a good point. So, um, the idea is I want to make sure that everybody has low shipping costs and also low uh, fulfillment 
uh, time, right? So I, it's going to cost a bit more on the manufacturing side, but I think what I'm going to do is split the manufacturing between uh, Noir Arts in Europe and a to be announced US manufacturer. Um, and um, so like the, the Noir Arts folks are going to do fulfillment and that should keep the shipping cost for everybody that's international down to pretty low rates. Um, and then uh, as far as the US goes, that'll be that'll be pretty quick and cheap shipping too. So uh, I'll, I'll be able to, um, you know, use that wild success and kind of spread it out amongst all the backers, which I'm really happy about. Uh, it, yeah. Great. So, Gr the, great news. So people things. from Europe go, go support the Kickstarter uh, yeah. as well. <laughs> no, but these Please do. These things are important. It's, uh, you know, I even had a, I ran a panel about running successful Kickstarter campaigns and there are a lot of practical aspects which are, which are a challenge. So it's, it's nice when uh, campaigners are, are aware of that and make sure that their, their project is available in the best conditions for as many people as possible. Yeah, I found, um, I, I really think the international audiences i mean it's just really really cool <laughs> to think about my art going across the world you know like that that really fills my heart so um uh, I, it's both very exciting and also i, I think with fragnarok um so i i think a big chunk of the like initial push to back the kickstarter was uh from the mailing list that came out of Fragnarok, which is just free. Like you can just, if you sign up for the mailing list, you get mailed a copy of Fragnarok. Um, so um, I, I think there's actually a large like Russian uh, segment of, of folks. So oh, wow. um, yeah, needed to make sure. Oh, I mean, I'm not sure. I'm just guessing because I haven't seen like where the backers are coming from yet for the Kickstarter. That's just kind of, uh, I, I saw that that was a big chunk of the uh, mailing list. So hopefully there's a solution there. You know, I've tried to make a solution so that if I need to mail a whole bunch of stuff to Russia, I have an option, you know. That's good. Um, yeah, because, you know, uh, when I run that panel about Kickstarter, one of my guests, they were saying uh, that, uh, they they went to a presentation. I think it was at Metatopia, and and board game uh, people who were making board games on Kickstarter were explaining that intentionally they sort of uh, beefed up the price of anything outside of the US because they were saying if you have more than half of your customers on Kickstarter who are from outside the US, you're actually gonna lose money through the the shipping cost cost. So so the, the, there are different ways to 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 meet that, but uh, she was saying that that person was saying, uh, as a business-minded person, that he was intentionally sort of discouraging people from inside the U.S. to pledge to to his projects, which is which sounds weird and uh, and uh, yeah, uh, the opposite of counterintuitive, but uh, yeah, that was the that was the way. Yeah, I've, I've heard the same from uh, a couple of, I've got a couple of buddies that have run successful Kickstarter businesses, basically. So they've been a really huge help. Um, uh, give a shout out to uh, Studio Woe, uh, my buddy Brent Critchfield. Uh, uh, and uh, he, he does this uh, card game of mutated monster goats called Gruff. Oh, that sounds um, cool. And, really great art uh really cool little card game super successful he was attached to like riot games and uh and so like the kickstarter really blew up and he was able to do a bunch of expansions and stuff over the years like yeah so he's really shown me the ropes and um uh a, a couple of other people have mentioned the the uh concerns that you're talking about uh and that's that's mostly if you're uh if the plan is like um 
you know, get everything manufactured in uh, China or, uh, you know, uh, you know, overseas and then uh, have that whole thing shipped into the US and then ship it all out all over the world like that's where you know you're paying like huge shipping i don't know how nuts and bolts we want to get <laughs> <laughs> but basically the way that i'm the way that i'm avoiding that is like it's a it's just a deck of playing cards right with really cool art on them it's like custom a deck of custom standard playing cards right so with that, there are companies that just focus on that. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I'm able, I'm able to, and, and they they do drop shipping, right? So I'm able to get. Um, I'm just using Backer Kit to collect the shipping funds after the campaign, so I can really I can see like, okay, I need to make this many in the U.S. I need to make this many internationally. I can have backers pay for the fair amount of shipping after the campaign and then and actually see like how much actual money i have instead of um you know like how much money i have for manufacturing yeah. instead of like trying to guess how much of that is shipping what's the um, net of yeah so that's, uh, uh, but you can't do that with everything right like you can't do that if you have any tokens in your game if you have like a uh, a different style of box or anything like that so that'll be a challenge i guess i should mention too that the uh it's kind of interesting that uh dungeon generator is um a single like component and mechanic that was pulled from a larger game oh. and there's like a full there's a full uh cooperative tabletop um like it's kind of like a <clears throat> tower defense game basically um where you're in this dungeon and you're you're each controlling a number of heroes and uh upgrading them and uh i'm hoping to eventually have that be a, a stretch goal and it, it seems like it's i should be able to do it at this point right like with the the amount of success i'll, I'll figure out some way to uh get that out to folks as like a token pack or something like that i mean it could um, be an ad it could be you know another camping for an add-on so you've got your your starting deck and then you do another campaign for yeah, it, more extended rules uh, i mean carcassonne and all those games do it so why wouldn't you yeah 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 so that that's down the line still um but yeah high hopes to kind of keep adding on to this uh for the foreseeable future i guess like there's a there's a lot of ideas people are coming up with uh a lot of really fun uh, thematic ideas in the Discord, so I don't I don't think I'm gonna run out uh, anytime. I how how long are are we are we over time? I, we're I, not I don't know we're not over. We've got uh, ten minutes or so left. So okay. okay. Uh, well, then I uh, well, I'll just keep talking. I feel like I'm talking a lot, but I guess well, that's why we're here. That's what I call a, um, a good customer. I'm just here sitting now and then. I, I throw a question. You know. You know what? Keep on talking. I put back the 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 slideshow with the T-shirts, the notebooks, uh, everything people can buy <laughs> on my store with your art, and uh, yeah. and it's perfect. <laughs> All right. Uh, yeah. So um, I mean, uh, uh, I I guess I want to talk about the Discord a little bit. I um uh I I had a friend of mine set up this just she did such a good job the discord um is turning into a nice light like light rp space like role-playing space so uh people are popping into there in character and uh kind of um just having a good time in there oh wow uh, but in also character. <laughs> yeah i know right isn't it great like uh so yeah i, I tried to like design it so that there are a bunch of you know, uh, singular purpose rooms and people can have everything organized and share their memes in a particular space. There's a, a hall of yelling for self-promotion. Uh, uh, and, and then of course the big, uh, like this, the purpose of the thing is, uh, 
there's a, a council for um, suggesting and voting on the um, thematic ideas uh, for the different stuff that got unlocked, like the banana suit. I know everybody's clamoring. <laughs> <laughs> Because banana suit ideas uh so jump in that discord i don't know how many uh folks will see this that aren't or that are already um backers but uh I, i'll just be like plugging that and encouraging people to jump in there trying to make it a really fun like you know welcoming and and uh playful community and not get too out of hand so <laughs> We're, we're we're off to a good start so far well good job but by the way as i was saying uh i put back the slideshow with uh not everything a part of uh, the art you did uh for me and man i love th this art <laughs> the 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 munchausen the nosferatu the uh, computer friend from paranoia people should really go check them out uh, i just i just love uh, how they look the, the nosferatu is like holding a rat like he's about to eat it and he's got another one on his shoulder it lo it just looks so good your your judge dread is really cool too well thanks man i forgot that you asked for a paranoia piece i'm i'm like here like uh <clears throat> name dropping paranoia casually and then thinking like oh man do, do i have to explain the paranoia game <laughs> no you yeah you you uh you already my, my uh, viewers should know that, and we had Grant Owit earlier, so uh, they should be aware of oh, Grant's really? work as well. So, so oh, that's... that's oh, oh right. man, yeah. All right, but uh, I, I will uh, include. Uh, I will come to join your your Discord. I will include a link to everything you mentioned. I will ask you for a list afterwards, uh, all the artists and the relevant stuff to include in the description of the episode, so people can go there. And click them, and yeah, they can go on the T Public Store to to find uh, uh, all uh, all that stuff. And uh, yeah, come to your Discord, and we'll uh, we'll set up a game. We can even uh, streaming it uh, on on Twitch is a bit of a challenge because there's a bit of visual ads, and I don't have someone to to manage that while we play. But uh, we could even stream it on on Discord directly if you're interested, uh, Paris Gondo. And, uh, and, I, and I will hook you up uh, to Laughless, and I will include um, a link to a, a project also in the description of this episode. So if anyone is interested in two uh, plugins for games on Miro, uh, she's doing a, a fantastic job and she's developing a tool so people can do it themselves. Yeah, I need that. I need that link. <laughs> yeah, I think, you know, really Miro, I think with cards like that, it would work very well because it's more visual friendly than than roll 20 which is more really with your your miniature w what you'd be missing is you, you can use tokens but you would not have the the fog of war and all this stuff that you have on on roll 20 but then i think you can you can manage without it especially if the next room is not generated uh, yeah, that, yet that's what i was um i was oh yeah i guess it's a little bit tricky to add fog of war to places behind you. But yeah, someone on the Discord was um, suggesting using the cards as fog of war. And of course, like, I, I can't believe that didn't really occur to me. But yeah, you can just like take off the previous room and now you can no longer see what is in it, right? So, <laughs> oh, like, wow. I, I, I was trying to think of how to integrate like the. Um, you know, all the uh, Roll20 and Astral have the dynamic lighting and point of view stuff yeah, yeah, built yeah. in there. I was like, all right, so how do I add that? <laughs> there, there, there's got to be a way, but like uh, how to add that, um, just something like that, that to the... To no, the no I'm picturing anyway. something even more twisted, like a, a very twisted dungeon, like a nightmare dungeon is that when you leave a room uh, you remove the card but if you go back you just pick another card it, 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 does, oh. it does not remain unless you let, leave someone there you you just remove the card and when you come back say okay we pick another card and it's it's different so you, you're just in a ever-changing dungeon and you're you're lost in there ah oh, that's interesting too huh yeah definitely gonna have some variant rules 
<laughs> All right. Do you have anything That's else good. to to add or to plug before and uh, and what is your your goodbye and where can people find you? Uh oh yeah, I'm at Roland Kunz on everything, everything except Reddit, which um I I reserved that name like in 2010 or something and then immediately forgot the password so uh at, at everything else if i'm on a platform it'll just be roland kunz so twitter instagram uh yeah whatever else you got going on i'm i'm on i'm on facebook <laughs> i'm on facebook um yeah i don't know uh rolandkunz.com you can see the projects uh rolandkunz.com slash fragnarok go grab fragnarok for free um bodhi's got a kickstarter coming up i won't talk about it Ooh, for him wow. but uh, it'll what? be really cool i need him what, on the uh, show then i need to book him yeah the show. you gotta you gotta you're gonna have to book him early he's he's a hot property um yeah i don't know uh, go Go sh uh, take a look at the Dun Generator and uh, share it with the world. And yeah, thanks for having me. Really well, my, fun. My pleasure. Let's play your game. Yeah, yeah, we'll we'll play together uh, in a in a near future. And uh, yeah, uh, again, go join people. Go join the Running Skins mailing list, and I will include my mailing list as well. If people are are curious and want to sign up for game. Thank you very much, and uh, I need to go because my son just woke up. I, I take it this we are recording it now because that's when my son is having his nap, so that that's why <laughs> I, I had to if you wake up so early. Uh, so yeah, thanks everyone. Uh, leave a like to the video, video, leave a comment, subscribe if you're watching this on uh, YouTube uh, because that's the way on YouTube. Uh, yeah, uh, thanks again, Rolin, and uh, see you around. Okay, bye. bye. Thanks for having me.